to pray with you this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Great to see you today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you? How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, everyone. I see Buddy Barrels here this morning, and I know some of you already brought yours in. It's great to see it. I know you do. Buddy Barrels. All right. You know, my dad used to say this, these are the best people in the world. And you know what? When you hang out with them like this, this is great. I can handle this for three minutes, right? And this is, this is fantastic. And so great to see you this morning. All right. You guys got some big voices in there to pray this morning? Good morning. Good morning. All right. Let's pray together. Big church, would you pray with me too? Here we go. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thanks for the day that you have made. And we know that you're going to be in it all. Speak specifically to me today. And everybody said, amen. We had a good conversation about shoes going on over here. I don't know if you could hear that. And that's great. We're going to pick that up next week. All right, boys and girls, see you later. Off you go. We'll see you later. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for the hugs, too. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. All right, all right, good morning. Hi, sweetie, good morning, good morning. Off you go today. Very good. Okay, okay, there we go, all right. All right, we're good, we're good. Good morning, church. This place kind of empties out some when we get all these kids moving out of here. We need to fill these seats. Hey, we've got a lot of stuff going on at SJA during the week and uh, during the month, and we're getting ready to get into a really busy time of the year. But a couple of things we have going on this week. Um, we're working on Christmas child shoe box, and you know we've been dropping things off like clothing and things like that. This coming week, we ask that you bring wrapped candy. Um, no chocolate, please. It does melt. So if you could drop those off. Uh, Joan Warnicke is in the gazebo, and she takes care of that. Next Sunday, we have daylight savings time begins. I think that it actually ends if I'm, yeah, it's actually ends. So your clocks go back an hour. Um, get an extra hour of sleep. It gets darker earlier in the evening, which I don't care for. But anyhow, this is, this is what we do. Uh, this week, spiritual care classes have been canceled. They resume again in November and then we have Thanksgiving coming up and you know this is the time of year where you know there's a lot of people that are needy a lot of people that aren't so needy Um, you know we will be collecting turkeys and things like that but if you need one please mark that on your connection card Um, fill that out and the church will notify you and we will uh, we will be giving those out this year again Um, just make sure we have your correct information on your um, connection card and then uh, one last thing we have going on today. It's the last Sunday of October. October's Pastor's Appreciation Month. Um, Cindy, if you'd help me out with this. There's a few people we would like to honor today. If we could get uh, Jeff and Donna. I don't know if Donna is able to be in here. Probably not. She's probably out with the kids. Uh, Pastor Ron, Sister June, would you please join us up here? Pastor Nick and Jessica, if you would come. Leo and Melody, are you in here? I know I saw Leo earlier. There they are. If you guys would join us up here. And then Pastor Nick. Come on up. Pastor Choco. Sorry about that. We already got a Pastor Nick. We don't. These are um, some of our staff pastors, and we would just like to, you know, give them a thank you for everything they do, and we appreciate it. And you guys work a lot. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes you guys don't even uh you guys don't even realize jeff's over here by himself oh there's donna donna move your little feet quick again we just like to say thank you on behalf of the board i'm up here representing the board the staff um, and the congregation it's a little token of our appreciation and we thank you guys so much and Cindy and 
the staff for helping me put this together with the flowers and the cards and all that. I appreciate that. This is a, this is a important day and we want to say thank you to you guys. So we appreciate it. All right. Fantastic. That's, um, it's very kind. I, uh, over the years, I'm learning to be grateful. Uh, I'm not very good at that. Uh, excuse me, why should I just grab some notes here? Uh, in the sense that um, I am terrible at receiving anything. Anybody else in the room like that just have a hard time? And, and, and yet I'm, I'm learning that there is just something very, very powerful when we have a heart of thanksgiving in all things. So your, um, just your kind of expression this morning. Uh, really means a great deal, and, and you're, you're teaching me something each and every week or each and every time something like that happens. It is great to see you this morning. I know we, we said hello to our kids and everything else, but before, uh, you know, we, you got to sit down before you had a chance to say hello to someone. So would you just kind of turn around and shake somebody's hand real quick or say hello and just uh, introduce yourself? If you got a moment to do that, that would be fantastic. We, uh, we have some brand new parents in the house this morning. We're so excited to see them. Uh, Frankie and Rob are here with baby Logan, who never sleeps at night. And uh, don't clap too loud, because he's sleeping, finally. And uh, so how is that parenthood thing? Totally a different gig, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, and by the time you have the nine, like you decided on, just think how great you'll be, and that'd be fantastic. So... Oh, very good. Get to see a new baby today. That's always exciting. Well, folks, uh, Scripture says this out of Genesis uh, 1, 27 and 28. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the, uh, on the ground. You know, it's interesting that uh, here in the first chapter of Genesis, uh, the first book of Scripture, that, that some of the very first words that, that humans hear is this idea that we are to bless, and we are to be blessed, and we are to be blessed, but more than just so we can have stuff, but we are blessed with a purpose. And, and God's purpose for us when he created us is that, that we would live in his plan, that we would live in the fulfillment of what he had designed for us. And, and, and it should be no secret to us that God wants to enable us, that God wants to bless us, that God wants us to move in that which he has purposed us to do. Look at, look at how God blesses Adam and Eve. Be fruitful and multiply. He's telling them to bless to be empowered and blessing, to grow, to expand, to enlarge, to prosper, to fill the earth, to enjoy every part of creation, to, to subdue the earth, and to be overcomers in every aspect and, and in every challenge that they faced. And then finally, to rule over the earth, to be the leaders, to be responsible for it and to be blessed. I believe that God wants the very same thing for us today. God wants to bless us so that we will live fully in his purpose. I believe that as we grab on to what God's uh, purpose is in our life, and as we grab that and we just in, in, in complete obedience begin to move financially in that direction, that not only are we blessed, but we are blessed to be an amazing blessing. But you know, it really comes down to this. It comes down to trust. Who do we trust today? Of course, with the story of Adam and Eve, as we just have walked through the Genesis series, we see that uh, that deception comes along very quickly, and Adam and Eve were deceived. And folks, I don't want any of us to be deceived today. That as we walk in obedience as to what the Lord has called us to do, he will be truthful and faithful to his word in our lives. And so I want to challenge you as, as not only as we give in this offering today and receive morning tithe and offerings today, that um, I'm going to be talking to you about how we can participate with ministry partners and and this whole idea of ruin, uh, not only around the world, but locally here today. And so I just want to remind you that 
It is all about trust. And so if you're at the end of the aisle, if you'd reach down, grab that bucket, hold it for just a moment. We are going to pray together, and we're going to receive our morning tithe and offering. Let's pray together. Father, for every dollar and every dime today, Lord, your word right there in Genesis 1 speaks how you blessed Adam and Eve. But you blessed them, Lord, so that they would recognize that they had a responsibility. And they were able to enjoy that responsibility if they would just walk in obedience. And Lord, I believe the same is true for us today. That Lord, that when you bless us, that we recognize that we have a responsibility. And certainly a portion of that is, is, is for us to enjoy, but there is also, in, in many cases, there is a calling upon those dollars. And Lord, as we uh, move and, and, and walk in obedience and trust today, that Lord, we would be open to be used for your purposes. So, Lord, we ask this, we pray this, we believe this today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. You may pass that along. And um, as you're doing that this morning, just uh, we have some pledge forms in regards to ruin that we'll be picking up at the end of service. But if I can draw your attention for just a moment to the connection card, even right now, in, uh, it, at our conclusion of our service today, we just, uh, we always collect these. And I got to tell you, we, we read every one of your prayer requests. If you're brand new with us today, if you're our guest visiting with us, you can mark the front of that card and you can let us know uh, if this is your first or second time with us and we would just like to follow up with you. And this is the way we do that. And so if you would take a few moments and fill that out, and we will collect these following the service today. And then over on the back side, it has uh, some different areas of, to, for volunteer opportunities as well as some events that are coming up like baptism or uh, child dedication, some of those things, then we would like for you to take a, uh, a moment to look at those and we will be collecting those at the end of the service today. And then finally, uh, as we talk about uh, missions today, next Sunday in the box following the service, uh, there is a, there's a nice core of people that uh, are looking at going on the Italy trip in the new year, uh, probably early summer, and uh, that is about a 10-day, we think, right now, missions trip, and if you would like to be involved in that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of places you can go in the world and do mission. You can do mission anywhere. I would think mission in Italy is not a bad gig, and so uh, you may want to uh, take an opportunity to look at that. Uh, come to the information reading the meeting and uh, just kind of find out and just begin to pray about how God... Um, may use you or how he wants to get you there. Sometimes we immediately go, can't do it, don't have the money. Folks, I got to tell you, if God wants you to do something, he always enables it. And so if that would be uh, something God is planning on your heart, then I would encourage you to go to that meeting next week. All right, it's a, it's a quiet crowd in here today. It's, it's like, I, is, there, is there bad football games today? I mean, is, is it... Are we worried about what's going to happen here? In the, is your team going to win, lose? You're worried? I don't know. It's just uh, there's a there, – maybe you know I'm going to talk about mission today, and you're holding on to your wallet a little bit tighter. I don't know what it is today. Folks, I, uh, I grew up in the church, and uh, you know that. And, and as, as a follower of Jesus, for as long as I can remember, um, I, I learned very early on that I have an opportunity to participate in something much bigger than myself. Now, my dream wasn't always to participate – in the level at, at, at church per se, but I always wanted to be a part of a great team, a championship team, and perhaps you have a favorite team, and as a child, you, you grew up wanting to play for the San Diego Chargers, or you wanted to play for uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers, or, or you wanted to play for the Montreal Canadiens, right? And that, that's my team, and that was, that was my dream. No one dreams of growing up to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's just, that. Big fans in the room. They just don't know any better. It's called deception. Anyways, um, a dreaming of wanting to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And I, and I know we want that. And I got to tell you, the, 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 one of the most amazing things that we forget about, the, about being in the body of Christ is that we're a part of something much bigger than ourselves. That we are a part of something that is much... Um, that can make a significant difference. And if I would give my life, and that's what scripture says, then my life can make a difference and, and God would empower me to get it done. Now that is a very simplistic understanding of what we call the Great Commission. But you know, the Great Commission has, that idea of the Great Commission has never left me. The command of that is, is found in the New Testament. And, and one of those verses here is in Mark chapter 16 and it says, he said to them, 
go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Now, knowing that our nature is a little bit rebellious, sometimes you hear go and you go, I don't think so, right? Or, or so someone says you need to go left and you go, I'm going to go right. We're not always very good at following instructions. If, if, you know, if someone tells me, hey, Jeff, let's go to the outback, I'm like, okay, because I like steak, right? I go. But someone says, hey, let's go to the grocery store, I'm going, I'm going to cut the grass. I don't like the grocery store. What happens in our lives is oftentimes we, 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 we look at the command that comes our way and there's something in us that makes us go, I'm not so sure about that. Folks, the challenge is this, is that life, we live life each and every day, and at the forefront of life is this, is this competing value system, and, and, and we have an opportunity to do good or, or not so good. We have an opportunity to live life our way, or we have uh, the opportunity to live the, or the way that the, the Lord has called us to live. We have the opportunity to, to follow after our own schemes or ambitions, or we have uh, the opportunity to follow after Jesus with uh, with all of our heart, with reckless abandon. See, Scripture tells us that uh, we are to live for Jesus and die to self. This is not a new idea. Scripture also tells us is that in Christ we have our meaning or we have our purpose. And I think the greatest challenge in the church today is, is this idea, is how do we do that? How do we really do that? You know, it's, it's something like Sunday for many of us is like the reset button. We come in on Sunday, we've, we've lived a, a whole week, it's, it's been busy, it's been, it's been good maybe in regards, or maybe it's not been so good, but we come on Sunday, and it's like hitting the reset button, and we go, oh, that's right, there are spiritual values that I need to be living in my life as well, that I, I, I forgot about because I got so busy at other stuff. And I, I recognize that when I hear the command of go from Scripture, that I really have to, I have to wrestle with that. I have to grab onto that. I have to, and you have to as well, come to a place of determination as to how to answer Jesus' words when he says, go. Frankly, I, I, I really do believe that it's not out of arrogance or ignorance, but often it's, uh, it's we just don't know how to take those first steps. I would pray that none of us would just ignore the command because that would be disobedience, but I would pray that really that today our issue would be connecting the dots as, as to how to move forward, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. When I read the Great Commission, I see opportunity. I see the fact that God has, uh, has, has, has put in place for me something that is very, very, well, it's not only amazing, it's truly that which he has designed for me, and, and, and I don't want to get caught up in saying stuff like this. Well, I can't do that. Or, you know what, I don't have the reserves to do that right now. Or, this is not the right time. Folks, I just believe if God calls you, he will enable you. And sometimes in that calling, there are days of challenge. i got to tell you that in ministry, I have had plenty of challenge days where I just have to say, okay, God, you called me here. You didn't call me here to fail. You called us here to move forward. So this one's on you. How are you going to do that? I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to place this squarely where it should be. I'm going to think first on your priorities, and I will allow you to handle the rest. And the same true is not only for ministry, but it's, it's, it's for all of us. You and I are designed to personally engage the question this morning to go. Perhaps you haven't even thought about that question recently. What does it really mean? What is the Great Commission, per se? I've said it a couple times today, and maybe some of you are going, I'm, I'm a little iffy about what the Great Commission is. Well, first of all, before I, I read the second scripture that gives better explanation to that, I want you to understand that I truly believe that SJA is the type of church that can grab on to go. I believe that this is the type of congregation that gets the idea that there is something much bigger than ourselves outside of this place. That there is something very, very powerful that God wants to do. And if we would grab onto it, it would literally change everything in our lives. Matthew 28, the more familiar verses in regards to the Great Commission, begin this way. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. 
When they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. Remember, he's been resurrected, and so they're seeing the resurrected Christ. They came, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. In other words, he's establishing the, the authority structure here. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. You know what's interesting about that verse is that often we read it, and we read it kind of as, as a... It's, you get all the exciting part about go and all this stuff, but look at the promise of Scripture here. And surely I will be with you till the very end of the age. I don't know about you, but anytime you've learned something new, isn't it kind of nice to have someone show you the ropes, right? I always laugh because many of us get instructions for something and we completely ignore them thinking that somehow we can do it better ourselves. And, and this is a man thing, I think. You know, we, instructions, instructions are for weak people. And, uh, and we put them aside and we go about our own way. And scripture says that he will be with us until the very end of the age. And then as we turn over some chapters in a few books, we get to the book of Acts and we see the empowerment, what God does by way of his Holy Spirit and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that causes this go to, to unleash on, on a world that uh, has never been the same since. At SJA, I believe that, um, that everyone should go. But how does that happen? How do we facilitate that? And I believe it really is creating opportunities that everyone can touch the Great Commission in one way or another. Here at the church, we don't call it missions per se, we call it ruin. And you'll hear us say that every now and again, but what does ruin mean? Ruin very simply is the idea that when God touches our hearts about his priorities for us, then it ruins our priorities for self. Again, scripture says, live for Christ, die to self. And so ruin is about when we allow God's priorities to permeate our soul. It should change our own selfish ambitions and our desire should be to follow after Christ's priorities in our life. We are ruined to ourself. And secondly, I love the way the word kind of spells out. Because if you say it like this, are you in, it poses a question. And it says, are you in to the Great Commission? Are you in to going today? Are you in? Are you available for, for the, 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 the touch of the Holy Spirit to grab a hold of your life and, and totally reorient where you are today? You see, we often think that when we talk about missions and the calling of God or God's priorities becoming a priority and being ruined to, to self, we often think that this is only for the young. But I know that God is touching people regardless of age, and he's completely redirecting. And some of you are going, I don't want to be redirected today. I'm happy just the way I am. I understand that. I get that. But there's been a few times in my life where God has redirected me. And at first, I kind of fought those things. And then I realized that in fighting those things, that's really a battle that I'm never going to win. And so I would just, in my own little private rebellion, I'd say, okay, I'll go, but I'm not going to be happy about it. And sometimes in regards to the calling of God in our lives, we, we know that we should go, and so we're obedient, but we go, I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to show God how miserable I am doing his work. And folks, i got to tell you, wrong attitude. Again, that does not get you to what God has purposed for your lives. You can go and still be walking in disobedience because if your attitude does not uh, match the heart of God for where he has called you, then folks, just look at it. It just isn't going to play out right. I know sometimes God will begin to talk to our heart and it creates an element of fear in our lives. And I understand that. Because there are so many things that we begin to weigh. There are so many things that we begin to process and, and determine in our hearts. Everything we do here in regards to partnering with, with ministry partners, and we're going to introduce you to some of them this morning. Uh, everything that we do in regards to uh, local ministries or ministries around the world, agencies and the like, we label under ruin. In other words, 
It's not about us, it's about that. It's about where God has called us to be outside of these doors. And so this morning, I want to introduce you to some of our Ruin partners. Uh, these videos were shot in just the last two weeks, so they're very, very current. Uh, there is an apology from Alan Martin this morning. He just had eye surgery, and in his own words, he kind of looks like Frankenstein Martinster, and he did not want to go on video right now, so he gave him a little bit of grace for that. And then uh, Scott Roberts, we were not able to connect base with. But this morning, you're going to hear from some of our um, missionaries and some of our partners, and they're going to be answering a couple questions, what's going on in their ministry, and then how we can pray for them, all right? So that's what you're going to hear, and we'll begin with Clark and Jennifer. Uh, my name is Jennifer Jensen. I'm Executive Director of Global Family Care Network. Uh, we are currently working in India, Nepal, Myanmar, and just launched a brand new project this year in California. To just share with you a little bit about what we're really excited about this year, um, many of you know that we have a rescue center in Delhi. This is a shelter for young girls under the age of 18 who have been victims of human trafficking, um, and domestic systematic abuse. Um, this shelter we founded three years ago, and I just received a report actually about a week ago um, that we have, we are just at about 200. We've served 199 girls, so soon we'll be sharing that we've helped 200 girls. Um, these are girls who've come to us, they've been rescued by the police and been put in our care. Uh, we partner with an AG church in the city of Delhi, um, which takes care of most of our staff and our volunteers. Um, and it's an incredible place if you ever have the chance to visit. These people completely uh, dedicate themselves to caring for these little girls who've been through very, very difficult circumstances. We help them um, get well medically, spiritually, socially, um, and then we advocate and take them to the courts. Uh, we advocate upon their behalf um, so that the judge can make a good decision in their case, often prosecuting uh, the trafficker or the abuser and actually receiving compensation back to the family. Our goal is always to restore that girl as quickly as possible back with her family. Um, and so of the 199 girls, most of those girls have already been restored back home with their family. Um, a few who are unable to be um, returned to their family for various reasons um, have been placed in our long-term family care. So that's super exciting. Um, and in addition to that, we have now been commissioned by the Child Welfare Council in the city of Delhi. Keep in mind that this is a Hindu government. Um, this is not a very friendly part of the world to Christians. Um, and they've commissioned us to help launch another shelter in the city um, in partnership with another church. So these are things that we are extremely, um, you know, we kind of get busy in all these things. And once in a while, we step back and say, wow, this is this is really a miracle. Um, only God can make those doors happen um, and open. So um, so that's exciting. Uh, Myanmar, you know, we've started there for the last couple of years, uh, kind of brand new frontier. Myanmar is one of those places we really have no idea how long the country will be open for. Um, so we are continuing to work with our teams there in the three states that have the most um, incidents of girls being trafficked into China and to Thailand um, and girls being taken by the military. Um, and, you know, we have two full-time coordinators in each state that have their own teams. And these people ride their bicycles, not scooters and motorcycles, although that's sometimes too, but they ride their bikes, they walk, and they face a lot of persecution um, in some of those areas to get out there and spread the word um, and help families to protect their daughters. So, um, yeah, so some of their stories are pretty amazing. Um, and then what we're really excited to tell you about is that we have actually launched a local project here in the state of California um, in the city of Bakersfield this year for the Daughter Project. Um, we have already started girls empowerment clubs in the city of Bakersfield, um, along with a, a hospital system um, that has learning centers in parts of the city where girls are at risk. Um, so that's been started. We're partnering with the church to do intervention programs, going to the areas of the city where girls are on the street, girls are runaway, homeless um, teens, to work with them. And we are in the process of getting licensed to open um, hopefully both and um, a, a group home that is specific to CSEC, commercially sexually exploited children, and a shelter uh, where 
girls who are under the age of 18 who find themselves in a difficult situation are actually legally allowed to check themselves into and stay for a period of 21 days. So that is what we're working on. That will take a little bit longer. We have to work through the state in some different areas, but, um, but really exciting, uh, really exciting. So we brought on another team member to kind of guide that, and Clark is really working with them. Um, and, you know, someday that means maybe we can come work more closely to you and work at protecting girls um, around Hemet and San Jacinto in that part of uh, the state of California. Because I think we all recognize the fact that uh, human trafficking may have may have started in that part of the world, but it is certainly no longer only in that part of the world. Um, and uh, we know that the church is our best defense um, in working with families in the community um, in protection. So, um, yeah, so I guess that's what's new. <laughs> That's the picture of the Great Commission, uh, international, but now coming full circle to be very, very local. And that's, and that's really what, what SJA has done very, very well for many years and we will continue to build on. We have to be, have to be ruin-minded right here our, in our own local community because some of those things, human trafficking, whether you believe it or not, happens right here. You wonder about some of those uh, some of those uh, young ladies that are walking the streets down on Florida Avenue, folks, they are only here for a very short time because then they are trafficked to another region, not necessarily even California. They're, they're, they're taken across state lines, so on and so forth, and it's a whole network, and there's a large human trafficking network that runs right through this valley and through all of Southern California. And so it happens. And so internationally and local. First Chronicles 16.24 reminds us that we are to declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. And when I think about Southern California, I think of all the different ethnic groups and the different cultures that are represented right here. I want to introduce you to Amarin this morning. She was our guest in one of our services back in July, and she actually came and helped us with, uh, with VBS uh, on that weekend, and I have to tell you that Amron, I believe, is one of the bravest missionaries I have ever, ever met. She's going to talk to you about her experiences and what she is doing under the offices of Live Dead. Here she is. Hi, San Jacinto. This is Amron Mickley, and I am, well, currently a team ready to head back to the field to Baghdad, Iraq, and I'm looking forward to getting there as soon as possible. Let's see. Well, things in Jordan where I was previously, my past term, um, are going well. I've got updates from our center there, Valley Center, and the students have increased, and we also have 40 new ladies that have been coming to the center, which um, is great because in the past we haven't had a lot of ladies that have been there. And, yeah, things are, things are happening there, and um, great conversations are taking place in the cafe with the their students, um, a lot of questions being asked about Christ, and so things are looking good there. Well, we have many opportunities for um, for you guys to partner with us with um, what's taking place in the Middle East. We have four training centers throughout the region, one in Morocco, um, Cairo, Egypt, Amman, Jordan, and Oman, and Muscat, where we have um, new, new missionaries that come out, um, as well as interns, anywhere from people that we host in the summer to um, a year to two years. Um, we posted in, in Amman in Jordan, we posted um, in the summer university teams and call it young people and as well. And so we, there's many opportunities to get involved um, as a church, um, as well as if you're wanting to go on the ground um, with Live Dead, as well as um, partnering with us in, in financial support. Um, yeah, we need your prayers as well. Um, that's, I think, probably number one uh, on our list. I mean, obviously, we need financial support for what we do, but um, the prayers of the church as well, because we are in difficult places. And so please continue to cover us in prayer for protection, for strength, for God to be moving in the hearts of the Muslim people and that, you know, that their hearts are ready to, to hear and that they, you know, that they're receiving the message that we have to give. And so thank you for your, your prayers, your support, and I uh, just, I'm so blessed to be able to have you guys um, partnering with me and where God is bringing me 
and where he's leading me um, for my next term. So thank you so much. Yes, I guess currently, um, while I'm itinerating, just um, that the support comes in quickly. I'm, I'm ready to head back, and the church there in Baghdad is ready for me to come, and so just that the remaining of my support would come in quickly. And also just be praying for my family, as obviously I know it's, um, it's difficult for me to leave them, and it's a sacrifice for me to leave them as well, but it, it's also a sacrifice for them to let me go. And so, and I know, you know, they support me when I do, but I know it's difficult for them as well. So if you could just be praying for my family, just for special grace over them and um, in this. And yeah, I think, yeah, definitely for, for those things as well. And yeah, I've just continued um, safety while I, I'm traveling and, and for what's ahead. I love that uh, the office they work under, live dead, because that's what scripture says that you and I are to do. Now, if we were to grab a, a world map today, most of us, well, some of our kids wouldn't even know what a real map looks like because they only look at it on an iPad or a computer or something like that. But if we were to pull out a world map today and circle a place we would want to go in the world, I bet none of us would be circling Baghdad, uh, Iraq today, right? We would not be doing that, and yet that's where that lady is going back to. And the reason she's going back there is because she's working uh, with a church that very much is uh, on the forefront of reaching Muslims. And it's a church that absolutely has been threatened uh, recently by ISIS and its leadership and that they will all be killed and everything else. And um, the fact that she's going back there literally to, to give her life. You see, about 100 years ago, when the Assemblies of God started to send missionaries out in the field, we really did send them with the idea that perhaps we would never see you ever again. Uh, George Wood, who is our uh, general superintendent, is, uh, is a, from a missionary family, and many of his, his relatives, his, his great-grandparents, his grandparents, gave their life over in Nepal, and they died in those countries, and they are buried there. Their, their, their lives were given to missions, to the call of God on, on their life. And, and, and we get this very, I won't say romantic idea, but the fact of the matter is that when we, we follow the call of God in our lives, then really the priorities of self must die. They must be ruined to self and to live for Christ. And when I look at Amron, who is a young lady out of just Southern California, she was raised in a church about 40 miles from here. And she goes, and she lives, and she's prepared to, to serve whatever that may mean. Now, some years ago, when we first started working with Amron, and I, and I can brag about your church leadership here for just a minute, knowing that that's a, that's a very volatile part of the world, um, she asked if, if perhaps something could be put away in, in holding, good keeping for her, basically funding her emergency release. In other words, if she got caught in a, in a, in a, in a situation where she needed to be uh, evacuated very, very quickly, those provisions, those plans, those means, of funds would all be there. And, and I can tell you that that money we put away that day, and it sits in an account just with her name on it, and we don't touch it in case that is ever needed. And so sometimes we go, right, it's a great thing. We pray we never have to use it, right? We pray that we never use those dollars for that reason but folks we go and we say lord i don't know what you're calling me to do but i will go and and i and, and this next missionary that i'm going to introduce to you is perhaps maybe the most well known certainly to our children because it was the first missionary that our children had uh, had an opportunity to spend some significant amount of time with and lauren becker is out of an, another assembly of god church here in southern california out of ventura first assembly and uh, we were one of the first to come alongside with her in ministry, and here's her update. Hello, San Jacinto Assembly. This is Lauren Becker checking in from Chiang Mai, Thailand. Right now, we have several students at TLC English Center who are interested in Christianity. We have a big group of students that are coming to our discussion group every week. We have two students that have recently expressed uh, a decision to follow Jesus, and they are studying the Bible with our church staff here. And we have a couple more students that are uh, attending church on a regular basis, so that's really exciting for us. You can pray for them and pray for their families, that their families would be, um, would be open to them becoming Christians. 
The exciting thing too is that in, at the beginning of next year, we're looking to place a team in a city called Lampang, which is about an hour and a half away. We're going to open an English center and university student ministry and work out into the community and reach adults and kids as well in a city that doesn't have a national church yet. We need people to come help build relationships with students, uh, teach conversational English, hang out with them, and show them the love of Christ. We're looking for short-term and long-term people for both Chiang Mai and Lampang. We need people to be on the church planting team uh, in Lampang and get things moving, get things off the ground. Please pray also for Thai team members for that location. We need more people who will disciple the Thai students and be a part of building the church there. Thank you so much for your faithful prayers for me and for Thai people. Please continue to pray that God would send people to work here. Pray for our students that they will be open to hear about God and choose to follow Jesus. Pray also for their families that they that their parents and their grandparents would be willing to uh, accept their children's decision to become Christians. Family pressure is really strong here. So it's important that we pray for the families and that the families would accept uh, Christ as well. Pray also for the, the church here, the national church. Pray that they would be willing to step out in faith and plant new churches in cities that don't have churches yet. Lauren is uh, a great young lady. Well, you, you probably don't know, but both Amron and uh, Lauren are, are, are single young ladies working on the mission field today. Now, I've, uh, I've known both of these uh, uh, young ladies for, uh, for quite a while now, and, and so I can pry a little bit. And I remember asking Lauren last time I talked to her, I said, Lauren, I know someone up in Santa Barbara, not far from where you live, that you, you guys would be great together. And you know, basically, I'm trying to set them up, right? And she just very kindly said, you know, it's just not on my priority list. And it's nice to have friends, and we do get lonely sometimes when we travel and we're on the field for a long extended time, but I just don't see how I can move into a relationship right now and do what God is calling me to do. Now, folks, you see, that's a reorientation of priorities because many of us uh, begin looking for a mate at seven years old, right? And it's the dream, and I'm not picking on women, but many of the young ladies have their wedding RA planned out from the time they figured out that there's going to be a wedding. You know what's going to be? First, it's a princess wedding, and then it becomes something else and, and all that. And, but this is a reorientation of priorities, and that's what I want you to see today. That when God touches your life this way, but you know what, there's no, there's no lament in the voice, so that's just what I want you to understand. There's no, oh, it's terrible, I'm going to be single all my life. Paul would say, yippee, good for you. But you see, our society says, well, you're really not something until you're attached to somebody else, and so on and so forth. And again, when we catch on to what God is doing, it reorients the priorities that our society has. Now, on a local level, Teen Challenge has been on the leading edge of residential recovery programs for a very, very long time. I believe over 50 years now. I don't. I, I, I meant to look up the exact date, but uh, here's a spotlight on what they're doing here in Southern California. Teen Challenge provides an effective, comprehensive. Christian faith-based solution to youth, adults, and families who have drug and alcohol uh, problems. We want to see people return to their full potential physically, spiritually, socially, emotionally, relationally, in every way um, transformed and made whole so that they can contribute to society uh, as they were designed to do. Some people come to Team Challenge to say, I want to get off drugs, but that is really just the tip of the iceberg. Because at Team Challenge, we don't just deal with getting off drugs. We believe that men and women who come to Teen Challenge become new people. We believe that there's an interchange that takes place in a person's life 
When a person comes in and they understand that our approach and our philosophy is that everyone is in need of recovery, it takes down some of the defensiveness so they recognize, okay, I, I need recovery in this area, but I'm not alone. And I think the, the isolation uh, of addiction uh, really causes young people not to move into uh, accessing recovery. Uh, and, and receiving fully the benefit of what recovery has to offer. When I first got the Teen Challenge, I had committed to a week. I thought, you know, anybody can do anything for a week. What made me stay was the peer support around me, seeing the women that were there and how far they were and where they're coming from, and they were willing to commit more than a week. And so I was like, okay, I'll do two weeks. And then it was, I'll do a month and do three months. And so it was really the peer support in Teen Challenge that kept me there in the beginning. and. Now I see that it was, you know, God giving me what I needed every step of the way. What program staff really did to help me in my uh, process of coming through Teen Challenge was really coming alongside me, not just coming down at me and telling me what to do, but coming alongside me saying, I'm here for you to walk with you through these problems. We're going to get through this together. So I'm able to share with them what I've been through. And when they come to our program to interview, I, I know how they hurt. I've been there. A common element with people from 18 to 25 is the peer pressure. And what we offer through the social model at Teen Challenge is how to have true friends that can bring a positive influence to each other. Those that are willing to say, you know what, I realize I can't go back to those old friends. I'm going to find new friends. They're able to make that change. I think the thing that I like the most was the relationships that I built, actually having true friends and a safe place to where I could just be so broken and completely myself. So the relationship component and aspect of it is very, very important, not only with the peer-to-peer the -peer person who's helping them through the program, but also having a relationship with God. Experiencing God's love can change a person's life. And then we watch people who learn to love themselves. And then they understand the freedom of God's forgiveness. And then we learn to forgive ourselves. Teen Challenge has saved my life. I came through jail with no hope and I was able to find hope in Teen Challenge. I was able to learn about God and how much He loved me. And when I left, I had learned to apply all the things that I learned through the Word of God to my life. When a person comes here, they are broken, they've lost everything, they have a sense of shame, and when they come to Teen Challenge, they are built up with this hope that things can change, that things really can be different. And when they begin to embrace that and allow God to come into their lives and allow other people to embrace them in their places of brokenness, then transformation begins to come. And it's a joy to see the miracles of Teen Challenge. I really hope this begins to challenge you as to what, what going means. I, I, I look around and, and I, I can intently look in our own backyard today and see need just about every which way that I turn. See, a ruined life sees opportunity everywhere. And we, we, don't, need to, we don't need to go far to be able to see that. The challenge for everyone to be touched by ruin is, um, is very much a priority here at the church. And as we come into the holiday season uh, in particular, there are, um, there is, there's a great, uh, there's, a, there's another pressure or there's another thing that begins to happen that where generosity comes forward, but again, finding those expressions in order to do that. And this past uh, year, under uh, the direction of Joan Warnicke and Steve has come along with her, her husband, they've been running Operation Christmas Child for us this year. And you've been seeing the videos the last few weeks and you've been seeing in the top part of your connection the items that we are purchasing together and and we had a box wrapping party a few weeks ago and and we started to bring in some of those items and there's still some other items in which to be purchased and and perhaps you couldn't fill a whole box yourself but going to the dollar store you found a few things that could go into those lists you all can participate in some level in order to be touched by ruin and and Joan wanted me to make a public service announcement that when we talk about treats or snacks, we're talking about things that are wrapped. Otherwise, when you make homemade cookies, 
the Border Patrol really enjoys those, all right? They don't get past uh, any of those things. So it's these types of things that will go, are able to go into a bag. They don't spoil and everything else. And just so by way of instruction this morning. And it's not too late to start. Even though we've been at it for three or four weeks, it's not too late to start and come alongside. You can get more information out there in the gazebo uh, today. And of course, with the holidays coming, like folks, do you realize that next week, it's November? <laughs> November. Oh my goodness. November. I remember Pastor Scott making an announcement somewhere in January, and he, and he said something to the effect, do you know how many more days are, or how many more uh, Sundays are left in this year? And it sounded big, because it was like 50 or something like that. But now we are on countdown, we are 10 or under to the end, or, uh, end of the year, and it's just, it goes like that. And, and we know uh, that there is need certainly around Thanksgiving, and we... Um, Wes brought some instruction in regards if you're a family that's really struggling and we'd like to be able to come alongside you and provide you with a turkey and and and, and you participate with us and you've been bringing turkeys the, over for years for as long as I can remember and well before me you've been bring, bringing turkeys that we help give out to our families and so on and so forth but we also have a food bank that runs uh, outside of uh, outside of us it, it's actually it was started in the Spanish uh, ministry, and uh, we want to be able to come alongside and help support our food bank. And so we've got these great SJA uh, grocery bags for you today, and we want every family to take one. It's your bag to keep, but there is a catch. There's a shopping list on the front of the, of the, of the bag this morning, and it has some uh, non-perishable items. Well, I, everything is eventually perishable, I understand that, but um, but their canned goods, some suggestions, so on and so forth. And what we would like you to do is we would like you to take this bag today and we want you to fill it up. And then uh, we just ask that you would bring it back and then we will immediately walk this over to our food bank and begin to stock our own shelves because we know as it gets closer to Thanksgiving and then Christmas and everything else, there's greater need and greater demand in those areas. And so we want to be a part of that and we want to give you, again, it's a way to touch ruin. It's a way for us, maybe you think, well, I can't be writing an extra check every month. We, we're barely making it as it is. Well, you know what? These are, these are good first steps. These are great tangible ways that make a significant difference in the lives of families right here in our own community. And so in just a few minutes at, at the close, I'll be inviting you to come and, and receive one of these bags, take these bags home. And, and let's, I'll just be honest. Every time you see this bag in your home, you're going to be completely guilt-ridden, and you're going to have to fill it every time you see it. That's just the way it works. You're going to see the bag and go, you know, I wonder how the food bank's doing. Oh, maybe I better fill that up a little bit. So you see, it's the gift that keeps on giving, all right? So there we are this morning. All right. Uh, folks, we've had uh, great participation this past year. We have supported our missionaries uh, to the best of our ability uh, the church has, uh, when we have fallen short of what our goal is in a month, the church has come along and supplemented that with general funds. We're not fully caught up to where we need to be, but it is uh, an ongoing process. We, we fund our missionary partners uh, with a very significant uh, check every month, and, um, and we, we just we, we try to get those out as often as possible as, as those dollars come in, and you are a part of that. And that's what the, the, the missions pledge is about and that's what helps us fund some of those or all of those that you saw this morning plus others you know when i was explaining this process to a gentleman that owned coaches oats he got so excited about this idea of ruin he's calling me and saying what can we do this year to help your church last year remember you bought oatmeal from us in droves right we o way overpriced it someone said to me said you know, I bought those same oatmeal at the store and I paid about a third of the price I paid a church. I said, yes. And um, we did that on purpose because really they, they donated every bag of that to us and 100% of all those sales went to help us in regards to fire Bibles for children. And we were able to help our children have Bibles uh, and so they would all be on the same page per se. It's the, it's the teacher approach. We're all using the same curriculum, all turning to the same page together and so on and so forth. And because your participation in buying healthy oatmeal, right, and your doctor was really happy you did it, you helped us a great deal. Folks, we can all participate in one way or another in 
And in some ways, we just need to allow the creativity of the Holy Spirit to begin to speak into our heart. My prayer coming into this Sunday is that God would be speaking to the heart of people. Perhaps a young person today is feeling challenged that their life is to go. I know some of the, the students in this church, and I, I know a few of them, that, 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 that beats in their heart and their life. And sometimes when that happens in the life of a child, it's not happening in the life of a parent. And I remember when my sisters decided that she and her husband were going to take <laughs> the kids and move halfway around the world to do ministry in a Hindu nation, um, my mom wasn't real happy. She wasn't real upbeat about that idea of not being able to see her grandkids, not being able to see her daughter. It was okay to let the son-in-law go, but the rest of the family, how do, you, how do you do that? Young children. See, folks, we're all in this together. and We all have a responsibility to this. But it's not always equal sacrifice, is what I'm getting at. Sometimes it costs just a little bit more. And perhaps there's a young person or two, or a young family, or a young couple, or even an older family and an older couple that are hearing the call of God on their life. And there's opportunities to serve regardless of what your birth date says and how old you are today. Folks, or folks, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these other things will be added to you as well. That's a ruined lifestyle, his priorities. And perhaps God is calling you to do something maybe a little bit different. We're going to show you one last clip with Jennifer and a challenge to all of us to be open to where the Holy Spirit may be directing us and taking an idea and using it or finding one in our own place to minister to this community. Here it is. Hopefully all of you recognize um, that you have partnered with this ministry now from um, almost the very beginning. Um, and so we are truly grateful for that. Uh, the financial support is obviously something that we need on a daily basis. Um, we need prayer on a daily basis. We need prayer for girls and their families um, all over the world and for our team who really uh, sacrifices to put these things into action that we talk about. Um, so prayer is a huge need, uh, finances. Um, but we would love to see some young people come and serve in different capacities. We have um, both short-term and long-term internship programs available. Um, and uh, we place you in, um, you know, in partnership with one of our teams in uh, one of our efforts overseas. And it's an invaluable experience, uh, something that may cause you to want to um, give your life to that, or maybe not, you know, um, just give you some perspective of what's going on in the world. So that would be something very exciting. Um, and I would love to see, um, I would love to see the church start a girls empowerment club in your community. Um, we have the curriculum already. Uh, it can be done in a church setting or a secular setting. It doesn't have to be done, you know, within the church, if you have um, a school setting or that, that could be done with, but um, but we'd happy to come down and train you how to use it and um, and see you start working in in the community with in terms of that respect with young girls. So, yeah, we would love to partner on um, on a deeper level. I don't know what God's talking to you about, but I believe that He speaks if we will be open to listen. We're going to um, sing a song in conclusion today, and as, as we're going there, I'm going to ask you to do this. I want you to begin to pray about how you are going to be touched by room, how you're going to begin to participate. It may be first steps today, or it may be you know, perhaps you've been partnering us with, uh, for a very long time and you support the ministry uh, every month. We have some folks that um, they are very passionate about this and they would not miss giving to missions, and it happens like clockwork. It comes in and, and goes to our ruined partners all over the world. And and we need to raise about $50,000 a year to be able to continue supporting um, the six different partners that we, we heavily, heavily partner with, all right? And again, we're a big part of their monthly, monthly budget, and again, we're a big part of their yearly budget, so your coming alongside makes all the difference. So I'm going to challenge you to begin to be prayerful about how you could come alongside. 
you could begin as, as little as a dollar a month. But others can say, well, I can do a dollar a day. Others can say, I can do two dollars a day. But again, allow the Holy Spirit to direct you in how this goes. Because you know what? I can give all kinds of suggestions, but I think the Holy Spirit is much better at placing on your heart your level of participation than I am. And so I fully trust that he will get that covered, but I just need you to be mindful and open to that. In a few minutes after the following song, we're going to collect our, our connection cards today. You can place those completed in the, in, in the box, and you also are going to collect these, these pledge cards. If, if you're not prepared today because you have to speak to your significant other uh, or you need some time to pray uh, about how you are going to partner with us, we will make opportunity over for the uh, over the next several weeks to be able to collect these. These are our 2015 pledges, so we have a few weeks, but we need to begin building our budget and knowing what we can do in order to continue partnering with those folks that are up there. As we sing this song in conclusion this morning, we want the opportunity to be able to uh, to get these bags into your hands. And 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 following this song, we're gonna. We're going to invite folks for, uh, to come forward for prayer. But during this song, if you would like to help participate in regards to our food bank, I'm just going to ask you to quietly slip out and come grab a bag so you make sure you have one before you leave today. Folks, I'm going to invite you to stand. And if you just would worship with me, Holy Spirit, speak, do what you are doing in the lives of people. Speak to our hearts. Open our hearts to hear uh, what you would want us to do to participate in going. The Lord, the command that you've given us, how are we going to respond to that which you've asked us to be obedient in? God bless you as you sing, and if you're coming to get a bag, you can come and do that at this time. God bless you. Hear the sound The sound of the nations call The sound, the sound of the fatherless crying. Who will go for us? Who will shout to the call? Hear the sound, the sound of the nations calling. Hear the sound, the sound of the fatherless crying. Hear the sound, the 
monthly to help support that $50,000 which we want to be able to give in regards to our missionary partners this year. Perhaps the Lord is speaking to you about an even greater sacrifice today, and that's the giving of your life to go wherever he asks you to go. It's big stuff, folks, but these are the questions that we must answer as a part of, uh, as being a believer in the body of Christ, how are we going to respond to the command to go? We can't dismiss it or ignore it. It's something that you and I are all challenged to, to, to come up with an answer and a response with. And that's what today's been about. If you're at the end of the aisle, if you reach down, grab that bucket again, we are going to collect your connection cards. And those of you that want to put your completed ruined pledge form into the bucket as well. At the same time, I'm going to invite my prayer friends that they will join me here at the front. If you have a prayer need today, we want that opportunity to pray with you. Perhaps, perhaps the Holy Spirit is causing you to wrestle with something today. Then this is a great day to come and just spend some time with a prayer friend. They just want to love on you, pray for you at this time. So if you have a prayer need, we're going to invite you in just a moment. God, I thank you for the opportunity to respond, to go. I just believe that it's the responsibility of all in the body of Christ. All believers must 
answer this question and how we're going to be about it. We pray your continued grace in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you folks. If you're coming forward for prayer, this way. Thank you for being here today.